In this video, I'm going to be installing Unitronics intercooler on my Mark 7 Golf Sport Wagon. Welcome to the Dad Wagon. In today's video, as mentioned, I'm installing a Unitronic intercooler onto my Sport Wagon. Now, intercoolers, although they're kind of a sexy product to look at when they're well made, they're not a sexy product to install because there's not necessarily any power gains realized from them immediately. Uh, they're not an aesthetic piece, especially on our MQB models. They're sandwiched in between the AC condenser and the radiator, so you barely even see them. And you know what? It's really about building your car for uh, a means to an end. And I know where my end is. Um, and I know where I want to get to and this is an essential part to doing that and really what it's going to help you do is to not let your turbo and engine get heat soaked over time and be able to have more consistent uh, and uh, efficient runs with your car. Um, I'm not going to talk any more right now. Let's jump into it and then I will do a review at the end of how the install went. The first step in this install, similar to many of my other recent installs, is to remove the front bumper. I'm not going to show all the details of how to do that right here, but if you click the link at the top right of your screen, there will be some more details on how to do just that. Alright, now that you have the front bumper off, the first step is going to be to disconnect a couple different harnesses. The first ones being those for the horns. You're going to find those on both the passenger and driver's side. There's going to be a lot of steps here that are repeated on both sides and I will note them on screen, but I'm only going to show each one one time. Next, you'll remove the harness for the ambient air temperature sensor that's located right under that front bumper guard. Using a 10 millimeter socket, go ahead and remove the two nuts right in the middle in front of the condenser. All right, this next view here, I'm on the side of the car looking towards the middle and there's four bolts we're gonna be removing in total, two on each side using a T30 bit. There's one that's located right underneath the headlight that's pretty hard to get to that holds the radiator support in there and then one below the crash bar as well. Now I'm beginning to remove the eight 16 millimeter bolts, there's four on each side, that hold the crash bar in place. As you can tell I'm using a ratcheting wrench for this one that's right underneath the headlight. It was pretty tight to get to and it was the only way I was able to get out. The other ones you'll be able to use a socket for. You'll also notice that later in this install I just ended up taking the headlights out. I just put these in. It made things a lot easier to have access to everything I needed to and to make sure I wasn't scratching them or uh, struggling to get anything out. And you probably notice I left one of those bolts slightly in place on both sides until I was really ready to pull the crash bar off. And on a side note, I keep calling it a crash bar. I don't know what that thing's called. One other note, you can see that I have a jack at the front of the car here. I'm not using that to jack the car up in any sort of way. What I am using it for is to support that radiator housing because there is a lot of weight there and it wants to start to fall forward. So I definitely suggest having some sort of support as you work on it to not put any strain on anything that doesn't need to have it. Now it's time to remove another part that I don't know the actual name for. I'm going to call them air dams because it looks like they direct the airflow right into your condenser, intercooler, and radiator. Simply use a screwdriver to push on the locking tabs. There's three of them on both sides and slowly pull them out. Now I'm disconnecting these two T30 bolts. They're connecting that brace that goes right behind your headlight to the radiator support. They're one of the last things that are holding the top of the radiator support in place. So this is a pretty bad shot and I apologize, but this is where you're opening up the housing that holds your hood latch connection. So what connects your hood latch release inside the car to the actual hood latch up front. Once you're able to swing that open and release those two plastic sides, you'll be able to disconnect the cable. What we're looking at here is a crash sensor and what we're doing is removing this harness. It's located on the driver's side on the back side of the radiator support. So this is one of those harnesses that has a locking tab on it. So you first need to pull that tab out. 
then pinch it with your fingers and pull down to remove the overarching harness. Having some sort of forcep tool like you saw me using earlier or another tool to be able to do this made this job a whole lot easier. Here you're going to see my creative way to remove the plastic radiator support housing from the condenser radiator and intercooler. What you need to do is put some pressure on those clips and quite a lot of pressure to be able to push them down and out of the way and then also have some sort of force pushing on the plastic housing around it to pry it out. I used that extension with a socket on it to give me a little bit more leverage without having to put too much pressure on any one of the components. Now that you have the plastic housing detached on the top, you're going to want to remove it a little bit further to have some more space to work. There's two locating pins on the bottom of the current intercooler and you can see how those work on your new intercooler as well. So you're going to want to lift that whole unit up while pulling out on the plastic housing. So now we're going to work on removing the condenser from the current intercooler. There's a weird rubber plastic retention piece that's in place that is not going to be reused. Uh, I can't really tell you exactly how to take that off or show you. Uh, you'll see it and you'll be able to do it no problem. Once you have that piece removed, we can now remove the condenser from the intercooler. It attaches to the intercooler by sliding into brackets, so you're simply going to lift on the condenser while holding the intercooler in place. Repeat again on the passenger side and then you'll be able to remove that condenser through the front of the plastic housing and get some space. The refrigerant lines do have some flexibility to be able to move that piece out of the way. Now that you have the condenser removed, go ahead and remove the entire plastic housing and set aside for a little bit later. Alright, now we're getting pretty damn close to having this intercooler finally out. There's a couple locking tabs on both the driver's side and passenger side that need to have some pressure put on them and then you can push the intercooler away from the radiator. Now I'd like to tell you that I did this on purpose to show you an example of what not to do, but here's what not to do. As you can see, I broke it. Alright, so now the last thing holding this intercooler in place are the two intercooler hoses on either side. Go ahead and release those ring clamps and remove each of the hoses. Finally, we got this bad boy out, and once I got it out, I was surprised at how light it was. And that's really the only advantage that this intercooler has as compared to our new Unitronic intercooler. So the main difference, one, is construction. The existing intercooler is what they call a tube and fin, and the Unitronic is a bar and plate, which has a lot better cooling properties and even better airflow properties. This new Unitronic intercooler is approximately, probably three times the weight of the existing intercooler, but it's also about twice as thick. Due to the bar and plate design and the design of the end tanks, as well as the added thickness, Unitronic claims that there's 60% more volume in this intercooler as compared to stock. To help raise the height of the intercooler and support its weight as I connected it to the hoses, you'll see I grabbed a piece of wood and used that on top of the jack I was already using to support the radiator to help me lift it into place and connect it to the hoses. Now that the intercooler hoses are connected, it's time to work backwards, so we're going to be snapping those top brackets into place on the radiator here. Now grab the radiator support housing mounts that were located on the original intercooler and go ahead and fit those right onto the new Unitronic intercooler. Now I'm reinstalling the plastic radiator housing. First I'm sliding it over the unit and working from the bottom up. There's those positioning pins on the bottom of the Unitronic intercooler that I'm first getting into place. Then I'm going to fit the condenser onto the Unitronic intercooler. Just like on the stock intercooler, there are brackets that the condenser slides right into just nicely. With just a little bit of force, the condenser slides right into place. With the condenser back in place, we can now go ahead and clip the radiator housing back into place on those mounting clips. Here I'm reconnecting the crash sensor harness. 
Don't forget, once you clip that in place, to make sure you click the locking sliding tab in. Now we can get the crash bar back into place and secure it with the eight bolts that hold it onto the vehicle. Sometimes when you're moving too fast, you forget a step, but luckily I caught it before I got too far. We originally took off these air dams after we took the crash bar off. Luckily, I was able to get them reinstalled with the crash bar on very easily. Reinstall the two 10 millimeter nuts that go right in the middle of the crash bar. Reinstall the four T30s that connect the crash bar to the radiator housing. Install the four set screws that were provided by Unitronic with the intercooler that keep the condenser in place. Now it's just a matter of reinstalling and reconnecting everything that you removed. Key items are the horns that you disconnected, as well as the ambient air temperature sensor you disconnected. So reinstall those harnesses. Don't forget to reconnect your hood latch and reinstall your headlights. And last but not least, put the bumper back on your car. All right, so the install is now complete. And what I can say now from the perspective of the fact that it's done and finished is it was a lot of work. It's probably about the same amount of work I put into doing the downpipe video if you also watch that one. The only difference between this and installing the downpipe is uh, there's not as much of we'll say instant gratification with it. With the downpipe you get to hear a note change and you just feel like the car is driving differently. With the intercooler uh, you know it's working and doing things better but you don't really know it until you really push the car to the limits and it's winter here right now and uh, I just really haven't done that just yet. So as far as the fitment of this Unitronic intercooler, it's excellent. Everything was, we'll say, plug and play or bolt on to the max in the sense that uh, nothing had to be modified or changed and everything worked out really, really well. So I can't say enough good things about it in that light. That's all I have to say right now. Uh, if you like this content and if it's helpful to you, please uh, like and subscribe this video because uh, more than anything, it just means the world to me to know that the content I'm making is helping all of you out there. And uh, hit the notification bell so you get notified the next time I have a video. And as of late, that's pretty, uh, it's happening pretty frequently. So we'll try and keep it up for all of you. Thanks for watching.